and welcome again to Christine's Creativity Cabinet, where memories last forever if you make art from them. Um, today, I'm going to show you how to make these. You probably are wondering what those are. I call those memory frames, and they're a beautiful way to document a memory that you've had in your life. And you can make a whole collection of them to put up on the wall to show how your life has been. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make this in this tutorial. I first want to show you a couple of ones that are my favorites. This is one of my favorites. Remember when we had that eclipse back in August of last year? Um, I went with my sister and her, her boyfriend um, to Hastings, Nebraska, and we saw the eclipse. And um, this is actually the only good picture I got. This is of, of my sister's boyfriend, James. Um, but my sister and her boyfriend actually got some other great, really great pictures that I was able to use um, elsewhere in this frame. So this is a picture of the crowd looking at the eclipse, and this is a picture of the eclipse itself. So that, that's one of my favorites. The ones on the wall behind me are from an ongoing art project that I'm doing called the Omaha Walks Project. The Omaha Walks Project is a, th it's a thing where I am visiting all the... Omaha landmarks on the Wikipedia Omaha landmarks list. And so for each landmark, I'm taking a walk around it. I'm having a healthy bento box lunch. I'm taking pictures and I'm doing an art project. And it's all an elaborate ruse to get me to exercise. So uh, this is the way an artist exercises. So these memory frames are, have been the art projects that I've, I've been doing for this project, and I've, I've created one for every Omaha landmark that I've visited so far. Let me show you another one here that I have. This is from the Charles Storrs house. Um, that's another favorite one that I have. Um, at the beginning of this video, um, you saw a bunch of other ones, and I'm also gonna have at the, at the end another review of some more of the ones that I've made. But right now, Let's get to making art. I'm going to show you now how to prepare your photographs for this project. Um, you want to use your own photographs, though you don't absolutely have to. You can use photographs from other sources, but your own photographs will work well for a memory project. I'm going to show you how to do this on a MacBook Air in the Pages software. And you'll need at least two images, um, one for the outside of the frame and one for the inside of the frame. OK, the first thing I'm doing in Pages is I'm opening up a new file. This could be either vertical or horizontal, depending upon your picture. Going up to Media, and I'm choosing the photograph. There it is. And now I've got it over in the corner here, and I'm going to make it so that it fills up the entire um, file, basically the entire page. So that, that's what I'm doing there. And I'm just checking to see that it does, in fact, fill up the entire page. And now I'm going to go and print it. And there we go. Now I'll show you how to prepare your other images. First of all, the one that's going to go inside of the frame. So I picked that one out. And now I'm going to resize it so that the shortest dimension is four inches. So you see how you can tell the inches on here. Pages has that nice little feature there. And now I've made it so that it's, it's four inches. And now I'm going to just go ahead and pick out a few other images, which I'm going to use as possible collage elements in the final frame. So I'm, I'm picking them out there in media, and then I'm resizing them and sticking them where I want them to be on the page. Um, doesn't really matter exactly where they should be because they're going to be cut out. Um, but there we go, and I'm, I'm just picking out some more here. And this is going to keep going for just a little bit longer here. Um, but you'll see how that I'm just resizing them and placing them on the page. And here's another one of a birdhouse. I'm going to uh, put that down there. And then uh, I'm going to pick 
got another one of this wonderful little TARDIS um, mini library that I found in that neighborhood. And finally, it's probably going to be just one more here. And what am I picking out there? There we go. That's the inside of the library. So now I have those on there. And now I'm going to print on... Um, I have an Epson printer and I like to use the Epson um, matte presentation paper. So I'll show you how to do the print settings for that. There's, I'm going into print. And now I'm going to, instead of being in layout, I'm going to be in print settings. And instead of uh, plain paper, okay, plain paper, I'm going to go down to premium presentation paper matte and I'm going to choose best photo. And then I'm going to put, um, insert my a piece of my presentation paper into the printer. And now I'm printing. Okay, let me just go over what you need for this project first. The main thing you'll need is one of these wooden frames. Um, I get these frames for a dollar at Michael's. And um, I, can, I can, if you want to make a bunch of these, um, you can go onto michaels.com and order them by the case, which is what I do. And that keeps me from going into Michael's too often because I have a tendency to buy way too much when I'm there. But these, these are only a dollar and they're great for this project. Um, of course, you'll also need your images, which I showed you in the previous segment, um, how to make your images. You need the one detail photo that's big that fills up the whole page. And then you'll need a, a photo that's gonna go inside the frame. Um, and that will need to be sized so that the um, the shortest side is four inches, so I have that one here. Um, and optionally, you can have other photographs which you, you can use to cut out and make um, and have as like collage images on the outside of your frame. Um, this particular, these particular photos of the of, of the Eponeter House, which is in the cathedral area. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be. That's the house that I'm going to be doing. Um, and then what you will also need is you'll need some um, spray on glue. Um, and you'll need um, also um, some, you'll need a glue stick. You'll need, um, the glue stick will be to, to glue on any collage images. You'll need tacky glue um, to glue on any three dimensional items. And then you'll just need any any and every kind of embellishment that you can find. So I'll, I'll give you some examples here. Here are a bunch of stickers that I have that I bought at various craft stores or at Dollar Tree. Um, so I've got a lot, a lot of different stick-on things there. Um, I was looking through my cupboards and I found these wonderful little mandala thingies that I had previously colored and added embellishments and glitter to. You can actually buy these. I'm going to turn this over. You can buy these plain ones at Michael's. And then all you do is you just color them with Sharpies and you can add whatever embellishments you want. Like that's just a stick on jewel right there. Um, some of these I, I put glitter on, you know, you know how to do glitter. Um, so I might be using one of those on, on there. Um, and I'll just show you a few other things. Um, I, I often would like to, to use washi tape. This is one of my favorites with the, the black with the, the white polka dots on it. And I've, I've got my um, extra thin washi tape that I got at Dollar Tree. Um, I've got some more thin washi tape. Um, I got this one at Wish.com, which I really kind of like. It's just this, it's kind of a hand-drawn line. And then I got these beautiful stickers from Wish. See how neat those are? They're all different. So those are fun to work with. I got, this also is from wish.com. I got the, these tiny little stick-on ladybugs. Those are awesome. I got, this is another really cool thing. I got some of these from Wish and I got some of these from eBay. They're the little gears and they have a nice vintage look to them. So those are, those are, would be fun to work with. Um, I also got, I think I got these from eBay, a bunch of vintage looking old keys. Um, and 
another wish item that I got was a bunch of these just miscellaneous metal embellishment things. Kind of little charms. And another wish item that I got was some more of this wonderful um, extra thin washi tape that has some really beautiful designs on it. This has little feathers on it. Um, this one here has little, teeny little flowers. This one I think has fish on it. So those are fun to work with. Um, and one more thing I want to show you is I also got this from Wish. These wonderful little buttons. They're made, I'm not sure how they make them. I think they're, they're probably made with a computer somehow. Um, but they're very, very intricate. They have wonderful little designs on them. So I might put those in the service. So that's basically it for all you, uh, all you need for materials. Um, the only tool that you really will need is a pair of scissors. And so I will get started now showing you how to make this. Okay, the first thing of course that you have to do is you have to take this plastic off the frame. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to pull off this little hanger doodad um, off of there and then usually I need to take the scissors and start a cut on the plastic to get rid of it. I need to bend down a minute because something dropped on the floor, which is very important. This frame comes with a little stick, and you're kind of wondering what that little stick is for. Basically, on the back of the frame, there's a little hole. If you put the stick in the hole, then the frame stands up on your table. If you want to be able to use this function, this is very important. Because the frame is square, you can just have it any old way. But if you want to use that function, you want to make sure that right side up means that this little hole is at the bottom. Um, you don't want to get all done with your, your image and then discover, oh, it's there, because then you're stuck. So make sure that this is at the bottom. I'm also going to go grab my wire cutters. which I didn't tell you you needed, but I only need it for one little task, and that's to move, remove this annoying little staple. So let's pull that out. Yeah, kind of cutting pieces. There we go, I got rid of it. Okay, so now that that's done, the next thing to do is to take these little phalanges and pull them up. You just have to kind of do that with your fingers kind of hard. It may, might not be very easy if you don't have fingernails. But you pull them up like that and then you can take this little piece, cardboard piece out. Now you, you're going to keep this piece because it's going to be kind of the backing for your image. Um, so I'm just going to set that aside. And now the next thing to do is I'm going to take my detail image that I printed on the whole sheet and I'm going to, let's set that aside, I'm going to take this and put it face down you want to decide where on the image you want to cut because sometimes sometimes it might be over here and sometimes it might be over here. This particular image I'm thinking just centering it would be good. Um, and then I'm going to take, you can just take any kind of a pen or a marker and trace around. I'm going to do that. And then I'm also going to trace around the inside of the frame, like this. So I have that. Now, next step is to just cut it out. That's done. And now I'm going to poke the scissors through and cut out this little square in the middle. So now I have that. Now 
now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna use Kleenex, but you can just use any kind of scrap paper that you have and, and put it down to protect the table when I'm using the spray glue. Um, I'm take this, face up on there, and then I'm gonna take the spray glue and spray the frame. Like that. Oh, those are good frames. Woo! But don't do drugs, kids. Okay. All right. Now, this is this is actually kind of a careful step here. I'm gonna just really carefully align that on there and, and stick that down. Now, I probably won't get it 100% perfect, but I've got a hack for that. Okay. Now that's all glued down on there. And I can get rid of this paper. Uh oh. A little glue on the table there. Okay. Now I have this. And now I'm going to, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare my image to go on the inside. So, the image that I have is this. By the way, I apologize for the condition of some of these photographs. I use my old 2011 vintage iPad to take these pictures because I'm, I'm way behind on doing these artworks. Uh, eventually they'll have better pictures. So I'm going to take, this is my picture right here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to figure out exactly, you know, all of that is not going to go in there, but I'm going to figure out where to put that so that the details that I want will be in the picture. And then I'm going to trace around this. Okay. And then I'm going to cut it out. take this and flip it over. I'm going to make sure that that hole is at the bottom right there. And then I'm going to take the picture, put it in there. And then I'm going to take the little cardboard thing and stick that in there in the back. And then I'm going to put the flanges back down. Okay. Now my picture is in there. And now I'm going to show you a little hack. You notice how some of this is not quite lined up. Like down there. I've got a little hack for that. Um, I always like to color in the edges of the frame. And so my hack is, is that I color in the edges and then I make just a little border along here. And what that does is it covers up those little areas where the paper doesn't meet. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to figure out what kind of color I want to use. Um, let's see, I'm thinking that I might want to use my gold metallic markers. For a long time I was getting these wonderful metallic markers at Dollar Tree, but I haven't seen them recently. I hope that they bring them back, because I would get these in a, th a three pack and they're actually quite nice. So I'm just going to first start by coloring in the edge.
I'm going to make just a little border right along here. It has to be done kind of carefully. I'm going to make a, a border around the image right here. Okay, at this point, all that needs to happen is, is decorating. So um, I'm not going to do a lot of narration while, while that happens. I'll just let you, because that's really up to you. I'll let you know that, you know, stickers you can just stick right on. Um, any of your collage elements that you cut out, you want to use a glue stick to glue down. Um, Three-dimensional items, you can use your tacky glue. Or you can use um, acrylic gel medium like I, I showed, it, showed you in a previous video. So I'll just let the music go on here and I'm going to start decorating. 